Hello everyone, I'm Brian Croy Dragon and still a bit recovering from an um from some feelings this morning. Maybe they're not exactly gone, but still the uh, the show must go on. We have another truth or scare commentary today. It's Ghost Hunters. Um, let's get uh, started. Ghosts and poltergeists, troubled spirits and the dead, or the work of other mysterious forces. Dead people walking through walls, talking to us throwing things violently about. Do ghosts really exist? Or are they just the work of our imaginations? This is the story of the brave people who search for the answers. The ghost hunters. I don't think I have any memory of this episode. And I'm, as always, I'm curious uh, what documentary was reformatted. I really only know the Castle Ghosts of the British Islands episodes. That how, yeah. Ghosts and goblins, spooks and spirits. For centuries, we have been troubled by these unknown forces. Perhaps someone you know has mentioned an unexplained visitor or an eerie event. Scientists are seeking answers to these riddles, but the harder they look, the more puzzling their search becomes. Some experts now believe that what we see as ghosts are actually evidence of a powerful force of nature called electromagnetism. in Valdosta, Georgia, is a hotel with a so-called ghost. Well. It scared me. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't talk, I couldn't run, and mm. or, or anything like that, you know. But he just looked. Mm. Oh, you know, pardon the pun, but it was just a dead expression on his face. The owners claim the visitor is the ghost of David S. Bell, a man who sold medicine from the back of a horse-drawn cart until he died here 35 years ago. Okay, so not connected to the Bell Bridge. They believe his spirit is still here, haunting stairwells and hallways. The owners want to know how to evict this unwelcome house guest. For that, they have summoned Dr. William Roll. For 50 years, he's been using the science of parapsychology to study ghosts. One after the other, Dr. Roll questions the people who work here about their ghostly encounters. And when I felt this pain Again, as there, you can see, it's cut off a bit. And I turned around, there was nothing there, and then it really bothered me. Right. At the bottom there. Like just, it was almost like a, like a cloud. Just a glimpse, really, uh, a shoulder, a hip, going around the corner. So I came to investigate. There was no one in here. The stories they tell are typical of ghost sightings, unexplained noises, hazy images of a person, the feeling of something close by, even objects violently and mysteriously thrown about. <laughs> Dr. Dean Radin, a leading parapsychologist from the University of Nevada, has many possible explanations for hauntings. One explanation is that it's purely psychological. This includes things like uh, misperceiving something as an illusion or as a hallucination and so on. Another possibility is that it's psychopathology, that there's actually organic brain damage. But Dr. Roll believes that in this case, neither of these explanations apply. 
Instead, he continues his investigation in other areas. The third category is probably related to environmental changes, mainly electromagnetic and probably magnetic changes. Dr. Wu now searches specifically for unusual electromagnetic energy fields. Because these fields are invisible, he needs a magnetometer to detect their presence. One of the fundamental forces of the universe, electromagnetism, holds every atom and molecule together. Electromagnetism is all around us, in the form of waves. These waves vibrate in many frequencies. Different frequencies of this energy create different effects. Light waves allow us to see. Infrared waves from the sun keep us warm. Radio and television waves carry signals that keep us informed and entertained. These force fields made by power lines, televisions, microwave ovens, and other man-made devices are now drowning us in electromagnetic signals. Some scientists believe these same signals could explain why people see ghosts. Is your TV sending out a mysterious energy that possesses the mind? Find out when we return to Truth or Scare. Um, um. Electromagnetic energy is all around us. It's emitted from our televisions, microwaves, and computers. Could these common signals be clouding our thoughts and creating the appearance of ghouls and ghosts? Dr. William Rill thinks so. When the head or the, the brain is surrounded by, by a strong field, magnetic field that creates electric currents in the brain, and that can give rise to um, all kinds of unusual experiences. Dr. Roll walks from room to room, measuring the electromagnetic force fields. It's, it's quite possible that you will have some very interesting experiences. His magnetometer detects unusually high levels of electromagnetism in the kitchen and bedrooms. Five, 101, 1222, 130. It's all there. The readings are so strong that Dr. Roll is certain the haunting of Bell House is the result of those fields. Now he looks for their source. Dr. Roll believes the people here are being influenced by unusual electromagnetic fields coming from electrical wiring in the building. He asks for the building's main power supply to be shut off. Zero clear evidence that uh, we're dealing with an unusual constellation of wiring in the house that's producing these very strong magnetic fields. And that, according to Dr. Roll, explains why Bell House is haunted. The people I've spoken to seem very sincere, very truthful. The experiences I've had uh, are unusual, are strange. But if you understand the, um, the human brain and the way it can be affected by extraneous magnetic fields, it, it really all, all makes sense. It all falls into place. In Northampton, England, a family claims to be living with a ghost they call Fred. Fred is an entity or an essence in the house. He has an intelligence about him that we basically cannot explain or understand. Paul Hopgood says the ghost has been living with them for 12 years and his family has come to accept it. I'm afraid Fred is now a part of our lives. Uh, I think if he was going to do harm by now, it would have been done. A simple experiment shows the electromagnetic fields in the home are strong enough to move tiny pieces of metal. It's a sign this haunting may also be the result of energy fields like those that caused the ghost sightings at Bell House in Georgia. But there's a difference here. Something is mysteriously moving items of food and clothing in the kitchen, while the Hopgoods sleep in the bedrooms upstairs. Is this another electromagnetic oddity, or is the Hopgood home haunted?
Albert Button, another investigator of the paranormal, is called in. He's looked into hundreds of hauntings. Some people hallucinate aliens, ghosts, spirits, all manner of usual physical sensations like poltergeists will occur. People think they live in haunted houses when really they're living in electromagnetic hotspots. Immediately he sees the Hopgood's house is filled with electrical equipment. His magnetometer detects extreme levels of electromagnetism. But his examination of the hop goods themselves suggests something even weirder. Quite clearly, the people living in this house are subject to high levels of electromagnetic fields, and the man of the house in particular has developed a clinical condition called electrical hypersensitivity. Okay, but the food and stuff. This condition was brought on when Paul Hopgood received a very strong electrical shock several years ago. I don't understand. Autism may explain how the family senses the presence of Fred the ghost. But what about the moving food and shoes? Albert Button believes Paul Hopgood is moving them himself without knowing it, in a trance-like state brought on by his electromagnetic illness. But how could electromagnetism explain hauntings that happened hundreds of years ago? before the discovery of electricity. Yeah, tell me that. We take a closer look at ancient ghost sightings. When truth or scare returns. Poltergeists, spirits. Is the human mind strong enough to move objects wildly around a room? Or is the work of ghosts? Charlton House, a 17th century manor near London, has a long history of strange noises, lights, and phantoms. The Association for the Scientific Study of Anomalous Phenomena, or ASEP, has monitored this old stone building for years, using an arsenal of ghost detection gear. Magnetometers, night vision binoculars, movement detectors, infrared sensors, and Geiger counters to check for radioactivity. The team monitored the building for changes in temperature, movement, light, and sound levels. They are looking for explanations for the ghostly hauntings. The physical features associated with haunting sites are granite, either granite under the ground or granite in the structure itself, usually both. Uh -huh. Underground water and higher levels of background radiation. Uh -huh. Dr. Radin believes granite structures are important for two reasons. They are naturally radioactive and they give off unusually strong electromagnetic fields. 3 a.m. Parapsychologists say this is the time of night when most ghost sightings occur. The true witching hour. Nighttime and fear of the night and certain foreboding plus dreams plus different environmental states. All of it together conspires to make the conditions which are ripe for ghosts to appear. Ghost watches like this have helped ASA build a huge database of haunted sites. They found hauntings are often reported in old buildings like this, while poltergeists, that is, the hauntings that include the unexplained movement of objects, are more likely to be found in cramped, overcrowded homes where there are high levels of stress. <laughs> There's almost always a single person who is identified as the cause of that movement, typically a troubled teenager. When that teenager is taken away from the poltergeist site, the movement stops. So it looks like a person, a person, is causing these events. Could the human mind be powerful enough to control the physical world and create these eerie events? 
Dr. Dean Radin's experiments at the University of Nevada show there may be a link between these odd movements and the power of the mind. This robotic arm moves randomly. On average, it successfully places the object in a container after 25 moves. When the subject consciously tries to influence the machine with their thoughts, they can reduce the number of moves to as few as two. Dr. Radin called this direct mind-matter interaction, and he believes it may help us understand how the mind could cause much larger objects to fly across the room, as if thrown by a poltergeist. In Vancouver, Canada, there is amazing evidence that bigger objects can be manipulated, again with the help of electromagnetic radiation. Physicist John Hutchison discovered that giant Tesla coils which are generators of massive amounts of electromagnetic fields, were able to lift objects nearby. These coils were originally designed to send electricity through the air, instead of through wires. When their energies were focused onto a corner of his lab, Hutchison found all sorts of ghostly activities began to occur. So you have things either taking off and starting to float or go around in circles, or just move around a little bit on the target area, or left off, or break apart, and shatter into many pieces. But stranger still, these events only occur in the presence of Hutchison himself. It's as if his mind is somehow using the massive force fields to twist reality. Hmm. Hutchison has even shown this with ordinary household objects. By using electromagnetic fields, electrostatic fields, and, uh, and all different kinds of configurations, it seems to me, in my opinion, that is, it forms a keyway into this other realm that allows for certain effects to happen. If the mind uses electromagnetism to create ghostly effects, is this only a modern condition? Or is it the explanation of something that's been happening for centuries? Find out when Truth or Scare continues. The ancient druid site of Stonehenge was for 5,000 years a place of strange visions and mystical events. Could a simple magnetic field possibly be responsible for centuries of its ghostly hauntings? Scientists have searched for the answers in the ruins of this ancient place of worship. Were electromagnetic fields disturbing our ancestors before microwaves and electric lights were a part of our lives? This place and these stones were chosen for specific reasons, according to parapsychologist Serena Roney Dougal. The stones that they use, such as the sarsen stones or the blue stones, all have strange electrical and magnetic properties to them. We found that nearly every stone circle in Britain is within a mile of a geological fault line. We know from research in parapsychology that when the Earth's magnetic field increases in intensity, such as you get somewhere like this, that you get very strong visions of apparitions, that you get UFO-type effects, that you get poltergeist-type effects, and strong healing effects. Why is it that visitors at Stonehenge today report different phenomena than ancient mystics? Dr. Radin believes it's because when we are confronted with something we can't explain, we tend to describe it according to our own beliefs. If there's a blob of light in a room caused by who knows what reason, and you ask 10 people to describe what they saw, a religious person might report seeing a religious, person, religious uh, deity, perhaps, uh, a scientist might report seeing a globe of light. Uh, somebody else might report seeing their long-departed Aunt Susie, and so on. People's expectations will drive how they perceive these unusual events.
scientists can't yet explain it, but places like these may somehow hold a psychic picture of their history. Maybe some people can tune in to these sensational events captured at the place where they happen. Dr. Raiden believes his experiments are beginning to prove people's ability to pick up images of those events. But even weirder, he thinks certain people have the power to create these horrifying images themselves and to control the surroundings as well. Hmm. Since we know that the mind can influence the physical environment, it's possible that somebody's expectation is so large and their motivation is so great that they actually can then change something in the environment which they will see. Not only that, other people will see it as well. That will then be interpreted as a ghost. The study of ghosts and goblins is revealing a strange new world. But even as we find reasonable explanations for the seemingly unreasonable, we open doorways that lead to even more mysteries. Electromagnetism may simply be fooling our senses, or it could be turning a key that unlocks previously unknown powers in the human mind itself. I have no recollection of this episode. I... Hmm... What do I say about this one? It's, um... Interesting. I have seen... Things, I'm just not sure what they were. Long ago, when I was in elementary school, I I was in bed, it was late at night, having difficulty sleeping as usual. I seen these things appear before me. I They were colored red and purple, I believe. Maybe red and violet. I don't know if it was actually something or if I had just... What followed after was that I lost consciousness. Either I actually saw something and I fainted or... I had fallen asleep with my eyes open and my whatever I was dreaming ended up f flooding into my vision or whatever and then I just closed my eyes I don't know I'm Brian Croydragon signing out. Stay Shrey.